<coughs> so we've been looking at graphing. You guys have a worksheet with 10 graphs on it. We're going to take a look at those quick. So number one, what's the equation for that one? Y equals 3x minus 2. Should be a line, look something like that. Number two, what's the equation? Six minus x. That one should be a line. Look something like that. Number three, what's the equation? x squared plus 2x plus 1. So it should look something like this. Number 4, what's the equation? The square root of x plus 6. First of all, you'll notice on this one, when I put in numbers, I did different than what I had in the other ones. I did negative 6, negative 5, negative 2, and so on. Because, one, it's, you want to take the square root of certain numbers without getting really ugly decimals. So if we put in negative 6, negative 6 plus 6 is 0. What's the square root of 0? Well, the square root of 0 is 0, so that would be right here. Negative 6, 0. You put in negative 5, what's negative 5 plus 6? 1. Square root of 1 is 1. That's going to be right there. I put in negative 2, what's negative 2 plus 6? Four. 4, what's the square root of 4? Two. So negative two, positive two right there. As you put in three, what's three plus six? We haven't got to the hard part yet, guys. Come on. What's three plus six? Nine. nine. The square root of nine is three. So it's right about there. So you get the picture, this one's going to make a curve like that. The next one that would have worked out well would have been 10, but the graph ends at 8. So we get a curve like this. It actually looks like one side of one of these parabola things here. Now I, you'll notice I put an arrow on the end of all of these, on both ends of all those. This one I put an arrow on one end, but not this end. Why did I not put an arrow here? It stops there. Because I cannot go smaller than negative 6. If I put in negative 7 there, what's negative 7 plus 6? Negative 1. You know, I try to take the square root of negative 1, your calculator is going to say, error. You can't take the square root of a negative. So I cannot put anything in there smaller than negative 6, or I'm going to be taking the square root of a negative. You can't do that. Number 5. What was that equation? Three plus three x. That is a line. Looks something like that. Number six. Two to the power of x. Looks like something like that. Number seven. X to the minus one. X to the third minus one. Look, something like that.
Number eight. <laughs> okay. This is another fun one because you'll notice I only I gave you very different numbers there in the fracts again in the table. You go to graph that. You know, if x is eight. Eight divided by eight would be one, so that's gonna be about here. X is four. Eight divided by four would be two. That's gonna be somewhere in here. If x is two. Eight divided by two is four. That'll be right about here. X is 1, 8 divided by 1 would be 8, that's right about there. Looks like we're getting a curve like this. If X is 0, what do I get? <clears throat> What's 8 divided by 0? Zero? Zero. Try it on your calculator. What's it tell you? It says error. You cannot divide by 0. So it's saying x cannot be 0. Does that mean the graph stops here? Not necessarily. If x is negative 1, 8 divided by negative 1 would be negative 8. If x is negative 2, 8 divided by negative 2 would be negative 4. x is negative 4, 8 divided by negative 4 is negative 2. x is negative 8, 8 divided by negative 8 is negative 1. It's over here. There's something in graphs called asymptotes. Now, we're not going to get into it in this course. Now, if you were to go on to a technical math course, you would see it. And what an asymptote is, is a line, the graph, it's really, really close to but never crosses. And here is an x can never equal zero. That's an asymptote. This can get really, really close to it, but it's never going to get to zero. Same here. This will get really, really close to it down here, but it'll never get to zero. Because x cannot equal 0. <clears throat> this one here actually has an asymptote. It goes this way instead of it's horizontal instead of vertical. As x gets smaller and smaller, this is going to get smaller and smaller, but it'll never reach 0. You know, if x is to the negative 100, that's really, really tiny, that's not quite 0. How about number 9? What's that equation? Four x squared minus eight. <clears throat> That's gonna look something like this. <clears throat> Number ten. <clears throat> Three four x minus four. It's gonna be a line like something like that. <clears throat> now I need. We went over a couple of these as we went through. Any others that you have questions on where I got the numbers or how I got that shape? <clears throat> for many of them, it's just a matter of plotting extra points beyond the ones that I gave you for X. So now here's the question I have for you. Four of these, one and two, five, and 10 make lines on the graph, straight lines. <clears throat> Is there a way that I could just look at the equation and know that there are lines? More specifically, is there a way I could look at the equations of the other ones and know that they're not lines? By looking at those, what can you pick out in the other equations that would tip us off that they're not lines. X squared. Yep. That actually I would group together with even like number seven. X to the third and X squared, what do they have in common? They're exponents. <clears throat> There's an exponent on the variable. <clears throat> I put down other than 1. Because x and y always have an exponent of 1.
I'm going to include with that roots. As we saw a couple weeks ago, a square root can also be just done with a power of one, or one half. So there is that link between roots and powers. So that covers those three. What's going on with the other ones? It covers this one too. So that leaves just six and eight. Let's run on number six. Well, it still has something to do with an exponent, doesn't it? But it's not that there's a power on the variable. What's going on there? The variable is the power, right? I'm actually going to put that in for number three. As for number two, what's going on in number eight there? What's the variable doing that it didn't do in any of the others? We're dividing by the variable. I list that separately. Technically, that's actually part of number one because you can do that eight divided by x. You can think of that as being x to the power of negative one. So it technically is a power other than one on my variable. But it happens often enough that I'm going to list it separately because you don't often you don't always see that that's a power when you look at it. These things here are what I call the three don'ts of linear equations. Those are the three things that linear equations don't have. So I'm going to give you several equations here, and I want you to go through and pick out which ones are going to form lines on the graph and which ones won't. What's that? We'll do these first. So let's go through these. The first one, line or not? No. Why do you say no? Exponent. There's an exponent in it, but is the exponent on the variable? No. 3 squared is just a 9. That's just y equals 7x plus 9. That one is a line. It's got to be on the variable. Second one. line. How about the third one? Line or not a line here? Any powers on the variables? Nope. Variables any are powers? Nope. Are we dividing by any variables? That's a line. How about this one? No, why not? <clears throat> three, 3 to the power of x, exactly. This next one, bottom one here? Yep, there's nothing. That's actually a pretty straightforward one. This one? No, why not? Dividing by x. This one? 
No, why not? X squared. This one. Yes, there's a power, but it's not on any of the variables. This one. Yeah, we're dividing, but we're dividing by two, not by a variable. This one's a little tricky. No powers on any of the variables, are there? But still not. Why? Because when you multiply that out, it will be an x squared. So now that we know how to look at an equation and tell that it's going to form a line, there's obviously you saw me graph those ten really quickly just by hearing the equation. So obviously there's some shortcuts. The type of the equation tells you what shape it's going to make on the graph. Once you know what shape it's going to make on the graph, each shape has shortcuts for graphing it. We are going to focus on lines. So we're going to pretend for a while that I can draw. We're going to try, let's start out with the simplest form of line we can think of. Y equals X. No powers on the variables. The variable isn't a power, not divided by a variable. That will be a line. If X is negative 5, what's Y have to be? Negative 5. So that gives us the point here, negative 5, negative 5. X is negative 2, what's Y have to be? Negative 2, so that gives us that point there, negative 2, negative 2. If X is 0, what's Y have to be? 0. If X is 3, what's Y have to be? 3. So you can see this line goes corner to corner, 45 degree angle across the graph, and through the center, through that origin. Now, I said that's the simplest form of line. If I want to build something onto it, what are some things I can do? Well, when we were solving equations, we had all of our basic operations we could build on. Add, subtract, multiply, divide, powers, roots. So let's try adding. Y equals X plus 2. Well, now if X is 0, what's Y have to be? What's 0 plus 2? 2. two. If x is negative 3, what's y have to be? Negative 3 plus 2 is negative 1, right? If x is 2, y has to be 4. Yeah. We see that this makes a line across our graph. It's parallel to the first one. It's just moved up two spots. Adding 2 just moved that line up two spots. <clears throat> What do you think is going to happen if I do y equals x minus 3? Just move it down three spots. Now let's test that theory. If x is 0, what's y have to be? Negative 3. Well, that worked. If x is negative 2, what's y have to be? Negative 2 minus 3 is negative 5. That worked. If x is 3, y would have to be? Zero, that works. So yeah, subtracting just moves it down. <clears throat> well, let's try y equals 2 times x. If x is 0, what's y have to be? 2 times 0, 0. So we're going back to the origin again. If x is negative 2, what's 2 times negative 2? Negative 4. That would be down here. If x is 1, what's y have to be? 2. So we're going back through the center, through the origin again. But it's made the line steeper. How do you think I'd make it less steep? Multiplying by a number makes it steeper. Dividing would make it less steep, right? <clears throat> well, I'm going to do this. Instead of dividing by 3, I'm going to multiply by 1 third. One third times x is the same as x divided by three. So now if x is zero, what's y? 
Well, one third times zero is still zero. If x is negative three, what's one third times negative three? Negative one. If x were positive three, one third times positive three is positive one. So it does make the line less steep. The one thing we haven't seen is we haven't seen, these are all going up as we go from left to right. How do you think we'd make it go down? How about that? Y equals negative 2x. Now if x is 0, y is still 0. If x is negative 1, negative 2 times negative 1 is a positive 2. If x is 2, negative 2 times 2 is a negative 4. So there it is. Our line goes down if we multiply by a negative. And those are really the only two things we can do to our lines because we can't do powers. So we can add or subtract, which moves it up or down, and we can multiply or divide, and we multiply by a fraction instead of dividing, which makes it more or less steep. So if I have an equation like y equals 2x minus 3, there's two things happening here. The minus 3 is saying instead of going through the middle, through the origin, it moves down 3, and it's going to go through here. The 2 means instead of being at a 45 degree angle, it's steeper than that, like this. Well, this number here, the number that's added or subtracted that moves it up or down, determines the starting point. All the graphs start at the origin, and that number moves it up or down from the origin. It's called the y-intercept. The number that multiplies x makes it more or less steep, that's referred to as the slope. So for right now, I want to focus in on that slope and talk about what that slope means and how it works. Looking at these ramps, they're obviously all different slopes. I want you to take a minute and I want you to look at them and see if you can figure out a number, one single number for each to describe how steep they are, based on the dimensions I just gave you. What are some of your ideas for describing how steep these are? I could do 6 plus 9, that gives me a 15. Try that with all these, they're all going to give you a 15, aren't they? I do 6 times 9, this will be a 54. But this would also be a 54. The only way that really works to describe the steepness is to take this height divided by this length. It's called rise over run. So this one would be 6 over 9 or 2 thirds slope. <clears throat> this one would be 3 over 12 or a 1 4 slope. Notice that's a smaller number. It's not as steep. This would be 9 over 6 or 3 halves. A bigger number that's way more steep. Also notice if I had one that was 6 by 6, what would that slope be? 1, exactly. It rises the same amount that it runs. That's that 45 degree angle across the graph. Anything that's steeper than that 45 degree angle has to have a slope larger than 1. If it's less steep than that, it has to have a slope smaller than 1. So to graph a line, a 
Let's just look at that one for now. Y equals two thirds X plus one. This tells us that instead of starting at the origin, we're starting out up one, plus one. Then the two thirds tells us that from that point, it's rise over run. So we're gonna rise how much? Two and we're gonna run three. There's our second point, our line goes through those two points. And that's it. So you just had three X and be up three over one. Well, let's take a look at that, yeah. Let's see, y equals 3x minus 2. That's saying we're starting out at 2 down, minus 2, right? And yeah, it's not a fraction, so we have to make it a fraction by making it 3 over 1. So from there you go up 3 over 1. Yeah, from the starting point, that point tells you where you start. That's where you start at. From there you go up 3 over 1. Yeah, we'll get there. How about y equals negative 3 fourths x plus 3? Where are we going to start? Positive 3. That's the first point on my line. Now it's a negative 3 fourths. Now the negative goes with the numerator, with the rise. So instead of going up 3, we're actually going to go down 3. And then we'll run the 4. So there's my second point. We go through those two points. <clears throat> this one looks a little different, but we just have to put it in perspective. What number tells us where we're starting here? The 2. It's a positive 2. So from the origin, we go up 2. We're starting right there. That's a negative 5, so I treat it as a negative 5 over 1. So from that point, I'm going to go down 5 and over 1. Over positive 1? Over positive, yep. Your run is always positive. Because remember, a negative over a negative would be a positive, so you can't make both of them negative. <clears throat> it doesn't always stay that simple. What's a little different here? Yeah, the Y has a 2 on it. All the other ones we've seen have been Y equals, right? We have to make this one Y equals. We get rid of the 2 by dividing by it. Now here's the thing. When we add or subtract to an equation, we only have to do it to one piece on each side. When we multiply or divide an equation, we have to do it to every piece, every digit. So 2y divided by 2 cancels out the 2. That leaves me with y. Here I have to do 3x divided by 2. 3x divided by 2. I'm going to show you an easy way to do this since it doesn't divide out evenly. I'm going to make 3 divided by 2 just 3 over 2 times x. Turn my division into a fraction. Then I still have to do the negative 4 divided by 2, which is negative 2. So where do I start out here? I start out at negative 2. That's my first point. And from there I go up 3 over 2. Run 2. There's my graph. How about this one? Yeah, it's y plus 3, so I have to subtract 3. Notice when I subtract 3, I only have to subtract it from the 3 over here. I only have to take it away from one piece over here. So 3 is gone over here, leaving me with y. I subtract it from the 4 here to give me 1 minus 1 third x. 
So again, I'm going to point out this difference. When I multiply or divide, I had to do it to every piece. When I add or subtract, I just have to do it to one piece on each side. So where am I starting with this one on the graph? One. And from there? Down one over three. Perfect. Where would I start with this one? Subtract two. We're solving for y, just like we always, just like solving for x in our other equation. Again, we're subtracting, so we don't have to do it to one piece on each side. So the five x doesn't change. Negative four minus two. Negative six. Now we got to divide by three. Good. Dividing by three, I have to do each piece. So dividing by 3 cancels out the 3. 5x divided by 3? Yeah, 5 over 3x, 5 thirds x. Negative 6 divided by 3? Negative 2. So we're going to start out at negative 2. And then go up 5 over 3. What are we going to do here? We still have to get y by itself. We've got to get rid of the x. We're going to subtract x. So that's gone. We have negative 2y equals 4 minus x. Then what? Divide by negative 2. So y equals it's 4 divided by negative 2. Negative 2. Negative x divided by negative 2. I can think of it as a negative 1x. I can make it a positive 1 half x. I'm going to write it like this. Positive x over 2. When we look at that, though, we need to know that that does mean 1 half x because the slope is going to be a rise of 1 and a run of 2. So where are we going to start with that one? Yes, we are going to start at negative 2. And from there, we're going to rise... One run two. I think it's time for you guys to play with a few. In your big book, on page four hundred, exercise sixteen dash two. On page four o one. Exercise 16-3. Also on page 401. Exercise 16-4. And finally, on page 404. Exercise 16-7A.